Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, or if this is your first time, then welcome. This is a slightly longer video on this project, which gets into the code. If you'd like to watch the shorter form, with just the demonstration of the output, then please follow the link in the description. If at any point you would like to check out the running code, you can do so through the ElectroCat Studios website. The link to the project is also in the description. The other day, someone sent me a link to a video where two browser windows appear to interact and draw different things that point towards each other, with the images almost flowing into each other organically. I think it looked amazing, and you should check out the original, linked in the comments below. It got me thinking, I could do something like this, but with a bit of a twist. The inspiration for the concept came from the conference room standoff episode of the US office. In this episode, four of the regular cast members point finger guns towards each other, each not trusting the others, in a funny conclusion to a murder mystery party. A link to that clip is also in the description. What if we could have up to four separate characters pointing towards each other as they moved around the desktop? The original video is quite dynamic, and they keep moving their hands to point at different people in the room, particularly when the numbers grow to four. Here, you can see the output from the code, which I'll go into in a bit. It shares the state by serializing into local storage. So, now onto the code. Firstly, the HTML is very simple. We have a title, two JavaScript files linked, and some styles in the head. The body has a canvas and a button. The button is to clear the local storage and start again, because you can run out of characters. The next file we'll look at is main.js. This file has some global variables, a reference to the canvas and a drawing context, initially set to null. We also have an ident, which will be a GUID, which identifies the current window, the character name, a copy of the state we are holding in local storage, and we will update this periodically. We also have a variable to hold information about where we're currently pointing, the left arm, right arm, a cooldown until we choose another person to point at, the current rotation, and desired rotation. And finally, we have some consts. Note in particular the character list. The first function we have is getState, which fetches the local storage from the local storage object, or returns a new empty state with no characters in the list. If it isn't null, it passes the JSON string back into an object before returning. Under this, we have the opposite function, which stores the state passed in as a string in local storage. We also have a reset item, which removes the key from local storage and refreshes the page. The main setup is done from the init function. We first set our global canvas and context variables, as well as the state, and we generate a new ident, which is just a GUID or globally unique identifier. Under this, we check to see if the state character's length is equal to the list of characters available. If so, then it forces a reset, because there is no one else to choose. Then we create a while loop, which randomly picks a name from the list of characters, checks if that character already exists in the state, and keeps picking names until a new character is chosen. This is inefficient, but as there are only four names, and it runs during setup, it's not going to be a big bottleneck. We insert the newly selected character in a position of 0 and 0. We then set the global state again so other screens can know the details of this window. Finally, we set up a repeating function called update, which updates every 100 milliseconds. The first thing inside the update function is we calculate the current offset from the left-hand edge of the monitor and the top of the monitor. This is the position of the window on the desktop. We multiply by minus 1 because the image we draw will be offset by this amount. We also need to update the canvas width and height in case the window has been resized. If you don't do this, it stretches the canvas and skews the image within. Then we calculate the character position by adding the window position offset and half of the canvas in both x and y directions. Then we need to grab the state and we do a little sanity check. This can occur if a different window has hit the reset button, meaning we need to reset our state and reload the page, meaning you can trigger a reset from any of the available windows. Then we need to store the other character positions, so we can choose later on what to point at. We do that in a loop, and if ident is our ident, we update the position, otherwise we store the variable in the uh, array we created. Then we set the state back again so other windows can see our new position as quickly as possible. We try to hold on to the retrieved state as little as possible to prevent writing back old values for the other windows, a race condition. Fortunately, this code either doesn't cause that or the problem corrects over time, as I've not observed such problems, but it is theoretically possible in this asynchronous system. We then start drawing our frame by drawing a black rectangle over everything. Then we get the background image using our global image loader. We'll have a look at how this works in a bit. If the image is not finished loading, it will return null, so we do a null check on this. If the image isn't null, we can scale it for the monitor. The original image is 1920 by 1080, but if the screen resolution is different, it should scale it. Then it applies the offset we calculated before during the draw image call on the context. It also scales the height to 90% to account for the URL bar in most browsers. 
If the character is null, the next bit will break, so we leave the function if that's the case. It shouldn't be possible though. We then grab the images for the feet, body and arms. If any are null, we leave the function, because the images haven't finished loading. Then we need to calculate what we're looking at. We do this by checking the cooldown on the pointing at variable. If it has reached zero, we pick a new random time using the cons created above, and call a function getRandomCharacter, passing in the other characters, so we don't end up pointing at ourselves. If the cooldown is not yet at zero or below, we subtract one. We get the angle to point at by calling a function to get the point, then passing that point in for each arm to another function, get angle to point. We then call a function to get the best angle for the body to point, which is basically an average, although it means we can tweak it later. As you'll see, it's not perfect. Then we update our current rotation if we're not currently at the desired rotation, meaning we can slowly turn to face the direction rather than jumping suddenly. And finally, we draw our image. Note that we're calling a function called drawImage and not the method on the context, because we can hide some of the rotation complexity for each item. We pass in the calculated rotation, the canvas width and height over 2, because we want the middle of the window. Underneath, we see our utility functions. Get angle to point is the first. It takes two points and calculates the normalized angle to that point, meaning the result should be between 0 and 2 times pi. All angles are in radians. The reason for the difference in the y being 0.2 minus 0.1 is because the axis on the canvas is inverted from a normal graph layout, meaning positive values go down instead of up. Then we have our draw image function, which subtracts the image width and height over 2, and moves and rotates the image to apply the rotation, then restores the canvas. Without this, we'd have to apply the rotation for every image, which would get annoying. Then we have a function which selects a random character name from a list passed in. Get point for character returns the coordinates of a character named from the list passed in. And finally, get best average takes the given angle between the two points, trying to take into account the nearest best fit, which might be different if one of the angles is closer to full rotation. This function needs some work because it's not perfect yet, but does a reasonable job for now. Then we have a look at the image loader file. This is a singleton class which stores copies of loaded images using their file name as a key in its internal object. We can see that the getImage implementation will check if an image is in the object already, but not loaded, and return null if that's the case. If it is loaded, then return the image. And if not, then create a new image object, set the source to the name storing it in the internal object. There is also a callback to update the object when the image is loaded. The set loaded object simply looks up the referenced image and sets the loaded attribute to true. We can then run all of this by using python-m http.server, which will run the folder as a web page on localhost port 8000. And we can see that it's worked, and we can open several windows. If it's just two, we can check the tracking, and if more, then it will switch between different characters. I hope to expand on this code at some point and add in some random quotations and better rotation decisions as well as improving some of the graphics. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you don't follow this channel already, please consider subscribing. For now though, I'll wish you a good day, hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.